Hey guys, and welcome to another of Fort's Advanced C++ tutorials where we are looking into Lua C++ hybrid programs. Well, last time we saw um, how to set up some more structure to our Lua projects by the require function, and we saw how to take a C++ function and, re and register it with Lua so that it's possible for Lua to manipulate C++ functions and get a little bit more communication between the two languages. Now, that's um, that's plenty useful, but a lot of the power of C++ is in objects, and we haven't really got a great way so far to create objects in C++ and manipulate them in Lua. You could conceive ways where you give each object a numeric ID and give them to Lua, and then Lua could take those numeric IDs and use them to access the objects. Um, and that would all be possible, but that's a little bit of a hassle and also, uh, incidentally, unnecessary because Lua provides us a way to directly pass what we would call a pointer in C++ to Lua. And Lua can store the pointer in what it calls user data and then use the user data to directly access the object. So instead of having some numerical ID that the Lua knows and then give it to the C++ to look up the object and manipulate it, we can just give Lua the the actual pointer so that when Lua gives us the ID, instead of, basically it's still an ID, but instead of it being an ID we had to make ourselves, it's the ID that the computer has automatically assigned it so we can skip one whole step of trying to find this object and go straight to dereferencing a pointer. Um, for that purpose, let's create a quick class. Um, uh, This class is going to be um, something simple. How about a pair of, how about an imaginary number? So that we'll do with this um, real int i imaginary. We will just include. We can set this up exactly like we should always set up a class. Any kind of well-designed class involving encapsulation is all very good and possible to interface with Lua. Um, okay, let's uh, do um, set rectangular int r int i uh, r equals r. All right, I'm gonna pause this, and then once I'm done setting up the object, the class, we'll continue. So, um, what we uh, what we have here is a class uh, that represents imaginary numbers. We've got um, the real part and imaginary part. Um, we can set the uh, values of those. We can set them using the polar coordinates, so magnitude and direction, which is theta. Um, we can get the rectangular version or we can get them as polar coordinates. That's all uh, different ways of um, interacting with a, uh, what's it called, imaginary object or imaginary uh, or complex number. That's what I'm looking for. So um, these little functions here are just things that helped me to uh, get some of the trig down right. Now, Hold on. Did I do something? Hold I think I actually did something wrong. Now that I'm looking at it. Uh, that's got to be two degrees, right? I also need a two radians. That's the only thing I did wrong. And a wrap radian. Float to rad. Float t. Um... Turn t times 3.1415926 divided by 180. And then um, float wrap radians looks something like this. Um, while t is greater than, why don't we just do this in terms of. Um, This is a 
pretty weird solution, but it's easier than actually doing that. I think that'll that'll be all right. So um, that'll just convert the radians to degrees, wrap it, then convert it back to radians. That should be fine. Um, so that'll have to be wrap radians. Yep. All right. Okay. So the uh, Im complex number is done, but um, what we don't have uh, what we don't have is a good way to register that with Lua so that it can be it can be used. Now, um, all we really need, like I was saying at the beginning, is the pointer, the ability to pass the pointer, and that's what we're going to look at. Um, what we do is, uh, let's do a complex new, oops, complex new Lua state. So we'll, we'll make our, the different functions that we need to write in order to interface this with Lua. So we need a way to create new complex numbers. We need a way to, um, set rectangular coordinates. We need a way to set polar coordinates and we need a way to uh, get rectangular coordinates and finally we need a way to get polar coordinates um, now so those are the five functions that we really need to define in order to um, interact properly with the complex object. Uh, so let's um, let's do uh, does it, uh, let's set it, see how the new function will be set up. Um, in order to make this work we're going to return the new object. We're going to create a Lua object uh, we'll make a pointer to it. New Lua object. Now, there's actually a constructor on that object with an R and I, so we need to um, get those numbers from the stack. We can just uh, kind of get used to writing this. Now, what, what does that mean? That means the first argument will come from the bottom of the stack. The first thing on the stack is the first argument passed to the function. So, argument one is paired up with first argument on the stack. Same thing here. Number two, that's argument number two called by the function, or like when the function was called, argument number two passed to the function. That'll be the second argument we pass to Lua object. That way we pair everything up nicely. We're converting both both to numbers since Lua object takes floats, and numbers are basically Lua's version of float. Oops, I said number instead of two number there. Now why is it complaining? That's weird. Jeez. Go away. Alright. So that'll create the new object, and then we just need to return it. So, um, that push light user data is the, the way of pushing pointers onto the stack. So now we've pushed a pointer onto the stack. Now, as you can see, we've got a little bit of an issue here. We're calling new. And every time we call new, we should be able to call delete. So we're going to need to add a function that allows us to delete complex numbers. Complex. I normally pair them up with a function called end. You can come up with whatever any standard you want. That's not really widely used. That's just something I've I've always used. So this will be how we can free those objects once we've um, finished with them in Lua. P equals uh, Lua to user data. S1 delete P. Alright, good. Now we can prevent memory leaks by calling end on any uh, on any f object that we're done using. Now we can go ahead and set up the rest of our um, interface. Um, Lua object P equals Lua to user data. And to user data, of course, is how we look at the stack tell the state, hey, treat that object as um, a pointer that I passed to you earlier. As you call it a user data, 
I want it, and you're gonna, and it's actually a pointer. It actually only stores void pointers. It doesn't know the difference between one type of pointer and the other. So let's go ahead and convert that so that it knows that we're using a Lua object. And then, or more importantly, uh, is this what how it handles errors in this case. What if I say convert? That's a that's a pointer. Give it to me, and it's actually a number or a table. In that case, it returns zero, null, the null pointer. So that is also handled without a crash, um, as long as you catch the fact that you're not being given proper objects before you start trying to manipulate them. In this case, I'm not going to do any error checking, I'm just making the C functions work, the C++ functions work. So, um, we're going to set the polar coordinates, um, no, we're going to set rectangular coordinates. There we go. Uh, and that's going to be Lua 2 number. Now remember, I've already had to use the first argument to get the user data, so it's actually the second argument now. Lua 2 number S3. So there we go. We can do the same thing with polar. So we can get that done pretty quickly by copying set polar. Now, we're going to do the gets. Now, since Lua has multiple returns, we don't have, and it doesn't have passing by reference, we'll have to use multiple returns to return both of these values instead of references, which is what C++ use, uses to get data outside of an object normally, or outside of a function. So Lua object p equals Lua object. I'm just copying from the first line of the, the function above, since I know that'll get me the user data out. Then I need to do float uh, a b p set or get rectangular a b. Next, I'm going to push two objects onto the stack. Lua push number. Remember, the first thing I push is the first thing returned. Second thing I push is the second thing returned. So I'll push them on in the same order I expect them to come out, the order that makes sense. And again, I can copy that and paste it here and just switch this to get polar. And there we have it. We've created a function uh, for each thing that the um, that the uh, Lua object is capable of doing. So let's compile that. Make sure everything's working. Good. C++ uh, agrees. I've done everything correctly. So let's go ahead and register all these functions now. Um, let's call it complex new. Uh, let's call it uh, Lua complex new. There we go. So we actually have Lua complex and Lua complex set rect set polar get rect and get polar. Change these all accordingly. And set rect set polar get rect. And unfortunately because um, because of the way C++ is organized I've not actually found a good way to do this without having to manually pair up strings with function pointers unless you use automatically generated code. So now um, we have uh, we have the entire object registered. Let's uh, let me just take a look at how long we've been going here. This is oops, 14 minutes. All right. So I'm going to do this one in two parts. In part two, we're going to see um, exactly how I take this registered object and utilize it in Lua. How I make it usable in Lua. Now that we've got um, well, not to utilize it, but yeah, that's actually all I got to do. Now it's usable. You know what? Not a second part. There's only a couple, about a minute left on this one, and in actuality, so let's um, let's uh, make a complex number in user real quick. Complex new um, ten ten. A 
a equals complex new. And then if I say um, if I over here want to make a print complex function uh, c n print uh, complex oops yeah complex get rect c. So what will happen here? I'll pass a complex number here. It'll get passed right here. It'll get passed to the complex get rect function, which will return the real and imaginary components. Both of those will get, since Lua supports multiple returns, both of those get passed to print, which is a very addict function expecting any number of arguments. So it can take those two arguments. It'll print them both. So let's do a few more complex numbers, A, B, C. Let's um, set that to negative 10. Let's set that to 10, negative 10. Let's then print those, or print complex A, print complex B, print complex C. Then let's change C uh, using complex set polar. Uh, and the way that would work is I'd do C, um, and then maybe I want Let's see, 10, 10 would be, two hundred squared by 200, it's about, well, let's just do, I'm just trying to make it the same length as the other one, because I have a weird idea that that's cool, and then let's do 50 degrees instead of 45, which is what those ones are based on, or 60. I'm happier with that number. And then let's print that complex number again. Hopefully, since we're almost out of time to make this a decently length video, it'll work first time. It's possible there might be a bug involved, though. Uh, here we go. Let's see how we handle this. Um, right now, I'm only getting a small little bit of error, but um, it's saying complex new is a nil value. That means my register probably didn't work when I said complex to Lua complex new. Let me see. Oh, you know what I did? Didn't compile the C++ again. And there we have it. Um, the math might probably be wrong there. Um, there's a good chance that I've done something incorrectly in the uh, math that's causing the polar coordinates to not behave correctly. But um, maybe not. That might be right. Uh, if you check and it turns out to be right, leave me a comment so that I know that I nailed it but um yeah it's not tested or anything so now we know how we can do some sort of basic setup but it's very C like system we have to you know use um, the user data the pointer has to go as the first argument in the function it's an okay solution and now we can basically do whatever we need to but it'd be nice if we could work out better ways to treat these as more like objects the way we'd like to from uh, C++ in, in the C++ mindset of objects. Now, what it would take to do that would actually require us to learn a lot of Lua. So we're probably going to have to settle with this solution for now. Because next what we'd like to move on to, now that we've seen how we can sort of use C++ to expand the language of Lua, um, we'd like to see maybe some ways that we can use Lua to expand the language of C++. That's really um, that's where things start to get much more complicated with how we handle the stack and um, and uh, that's where if you are a more hardcore C++ program working on an application and you want to use Lua here and there you're going to actually need to know how to use Lua to expand C++. So far like I've been saying we've basically been making an executor that can look at Lua scripts and run them the same way the normal executor does and then just learning how to add our own features that we can program in C++ to the language so this is going to be going the other direction and using Lua as an extension on C++. And once we've learned that tool, we'll learn how we can use the stack a lot more uh, thoroughly to do complex sort of integration of the two, where neither one is really completely in control, but they're passing back and forth frequently. Um, so, um, till next time, later.